Hi, welcome to this week's video. I I don't really have an intro, so I'll 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 get it one eventually. I'm kind of just starting out. Uh, this is just a little bit of a rant about something that's on my mind, which I guess is what kind of all my videos are gonna end up being. Just whatever's on my mind, um, and whatever I feel like I have something to say on. So, um, this is just something that I've been seeing a lot, and I just had some thoughts accumulate. I have a lot to say. Now, um, I could talk about this for a long time, and it would probably end up being like a half hour, but I want to try my best to keep this a reasonable length and kind of focused on what I wanted to say. So, unfortunately, I don't really have like a format or a plan, so it's just kind of gonna come out however it comes out. Um, so I don't know where to start. I guess I'll just start with um, my decision to make the video. So I was on Instagram and I just, I saw a video of, well, I, I, this happened a couple times actually, a couple different videos. And the, the general, without going into all the details, the general theme was kids being interviewed on the street and talking about what like their understanding of the LGBT community um, and giving answers. And then I go to the comment section and it's like filled with people who are very angry about it, saying that we need to protect children and, you know, children sh don't need to know about this stuff and why do we have to shove an agenda down kids' you know, throats and in kids' faces and all that. Um, and it, there's, al there's always an accusation of there being an agenda. Um, and it just got me thinking about how I've been hearing this off directed at the LGBT community for so often, you know, from calling drag queens groomers to, to trans people, and then it eventually just transforms into complete hatred. I mean, it's like, now it's just, it starts out where it's like, oh, well, being transgender, blah, 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 it's part of a woke agenda. Then it just turns into you can't be transgender and I'm gonna use the the wrong pronouns on purpose, even though I know it bothers you, I'm gonna do it just to disrespect you and let you know that I think you're insane. And, uh, and then everyone starts doing it and then it becomes the new thing. And rich people like Elon Musk and JK Rowling are, are doing it. And, you know, it's just become a popular mentality I've noticed. And I, it, I've just, I hate that it revolves around the idea that you have to protect children. That's, that's a whole other thing, and um, this has been used, I think, by um, politicians and uh, just generally, like, powerful government-type people um, to try and control people, because it works, you know. We have an instinct to protect, to protect, we have an instinct to protect children. They're young, they have more years ahead. You know, they, they're, they're kind of helpless. The younger they get, the more helpless they are. So the more innocent they are, and the more you want to protect something that can't really take care of itself. Um, so it's an instinct we have to protect children, and they use that. They're like, oh, you know, we got to save the children this and save the children that. And I could get into all the details of why that might be. I think there's a lot of reasons. Um, largely, I think it has to do with a political system designed to take advantage of the working class citizen and I could do separate videos on all of this because I don't want my videos to be long and if I start going off on a rant explaining all of this it's going to become something else so I want to keep this focused on the topic um, but with a little bit of information about some other topics this is um, and keep in mind this isn't me like preaching I'm just going on a rant and I'm open to hearing other people's opinions in the comments. It's just that um, I don't want to have, like, a bunch of arguments or anything. I prefer to do that on a live stream so that, you know, people can actually see what I'm saying instead of it just getting lost in a comment war somewhere. Um, but I'll still read your comments. You can say whatever you want. I might use your comment in a future live stream. I go live weekly, too, so, you know, it could happen. But anyway, um, with... Uh, the attempt to control people, it's because they want to keep people working. They want to keep, you know, they, it's kind of like a pyramid where the people at the bottom are holding it up and doing all the work. And then there gets to be less and less people as it gets to the top. And then you get to the top and it's that upper 1%. 
and um, and they're kind of collecting all the benefits of the people on the bottom. The thing about the people on the bottom is if they just stopped doing their work and they left, the whole pyramid would come collapsing down. So they can't have that. They have to keep them working and they they have to keep them basically like slaves. I mean, you could say that people are getting paid, but I mean, are they really getting paid? It almost feels like they're they're just they're they're getting the the basic needs met that they would need in order to continue working, and they really aren't being taken care of very much beyond that. Um, it's like, yeah, we'll pay you just enough so you can stay physically and mentally well enough to do the job we need you to do, which is literally what you would have to do to a slave. You know, if your slave isn't capable anymore of doing the job, then they might as well be a piece of garbage. And that is exactly what we treat homeless people like, at least in the U.S., is like they're not even there. And that says a lot, you know? <laughs> All this talk about, you know, protect children. Well, that homeless person was a child once. Everyone was a child once. But we grow up, and we grow up in a system that's designed to take advantage of us. And people don't want to realize that because it means... They might actually have to do something. God forbid you, you actually have to do anything. It's a lot easier to just let the powerful people tell you what you're supposed to do. They're like, just vote. That'll fix all your problems. That's why you still have all the same problems after all these years, even though you vote all the time. <laughs> the, the same problems are still there 50 years later. Nothing's changed. Um, so yeah, just vote. That'll fix everything. And, uh, and you know... And fight with each other, too. Make sure you blame the left. The left is the problem. Or no, to the right. Make sure you blame the right. The right's the problem. It's like, no, it's just none of this is actually addressing the problem at its root. It's just keeping people busy, keeping them fighting with each other. And, um, you know, we also have, uh, like, you know, keeping people from being liberated. And that's what I think is going on with the left, is that they're starting to become a little bit more liberated and saying, like, hey... Why can't I do this? Why can't I dress differently, act differently, you know, not just do what I'm being told to do by whether it be religion or just societal expectations or just what people are telling you is normal. To stand up against that and question that is threatening to them because you might stand up against them. So they have to make sure you're not doing that. So what they do is they, they turn the conservatives into your villains so that you're busy yelling at the conservatives and then you're not busy yelling at you know, the people that are working the shit out of you. And um, it, it's, it, it's really sad because people have no awareness of this at all. The ones that do feel very hopeless and they don't do anything about it because they don't really see anything that can be done. Um, and I understand that. It, it, it is pretty hopeless. Um, but, you know, it's not going to last because actions catch up to you. And this, this is starting to fall apart. I think we've reached a point where um, it's, it's becoming a lot harder to make the wrong decision without it being obvious that it's wrong. And that's why when people make the wrong decision, they almost look insane. When I, there was a time when I would listen to conservatives and hear the, the right wing perspective. And I would actually think, yeah, this, I can see where they're coming from. This makes sense. But I, I can't do that anymore. I mean, I, I listen to them and I'm thinking, holy shit, what did you smoke? You sound insane. And that's because all they're doing is talking about how the left is trying to brainwash you into being free. I mean, God forbid that you actually have the right to do what you really want to do, dress how you really want to dress, act how you really want to act. It's not like you're even hurting anyone, but they have to make you think you are. So that's when they bring children into it. They're like, they're not hurting anyone, but kids, kids, they're hurting kids somehow. It's like, you know, they just pull this excuse out of their ass. It's a last resort to say that um, kids are in danger of queer people and and kids are in danger. What kids are in danger of is priests. Kids are in danger of being part of this system that you are upholding, of being lied to, being told what to believe, what to think. They're committing suicide because they don't feel like they belong in this world. And you're basically telling them that they're right in thinking that. You know, you're saying, my way or the highway, if you're not going to conform and be like me, then you don't, you shouldn't be here at all. You're of the devil or whatever it is. And this is how, how we treat insane people. You know, we lock them away in an, in, a, in an asylum. We put them in a straitjacket and we treat them like they're not there. They're not getting real help. 
they're getting medication, they're getting therapy, but really what is that doing? It's not actually helping them to get to the root of their issues. It's just saying, we want you to be what we deem as a good enough citizen. You know, we want you to be functioning in society. Um, and until you can prove that you are, we're going to keep you in here and treat you like an animal. And, uh, you know, all the therapy just comes off as condescending because they're basically, they're talking to you like you're wrong and like, you know, it's a journey of figuring out why you're wrong. At what point do they actually listen to you and make you feel heard and like, you know, like you're not crazy to, to actually validate you and to go in and do further research on what might, you know, what outside energies might be causing you to, to act that way it could be so many different factors. But they just say, well, you're not a perfect person, you don't fit into our idea of what's good, throw you away, dispose of you and worry about you, never. Um, and that's also what we do with criminals when they're sent to prison. It's very, very messed up, and, and there's, no, there's no room for actually having empathy or compassion for anyone. That's just out the window. So it, it's, it's hard to look at, and I understand why people are killing themselves. I understand why people who are aware of all of this feel very hopeless, because it doesn't look like anything can be done. But you, you talk about it. Um, I think what, what helps is believing that even if um, everything is a mess, you have to think about why. Why do we care? Because we love each other. That's what it comes down to. We believe that we are all connected. We're all cut from the same cloth, part of the same universe. And we're all sort of brothers and sisters in that way. And we're supposed to love each other. That love is there. And when that love is damaged, we feel pain and we react in certain ways, just like if your family is having some kind of dispute and you don't know where you fit into it and you're in an argument with your family. Um, it's hard because it makes you feel like, you know, you love them, but you hate them at the same time. That's where we are, I think, as a society. And people are just filled with so much emotion and they don't know what to do with it. They're not managing it well. No one is being taught how to do this stuff. So it's just really bad mental health um, in general in the United States, terrible mental health. And I mean, to the point where people are even saying shit like, what is a mental health day? There's no such thing as mental health days. You know, <laughs> just, just keep working, keep working, keep working. That's what drilled into your head from the time you're born. Um, you know, and it's, it's really not working and people are only starting to realize this. And I think as we, we progress in realizing that it's, it's going to become a lot more obvious when we're doing something that's just effectively insane. But, um, the whole protecting children thing, if you actually want to protect children, let's design a system to raise them and educate them that's actually going to be beneficial for allowing them to blossom into who they really are and to do what they really feel they're supposed to be doing. It doesn't mean they're going to be sitting around all lazy and useless. They're still going to be doing something. Life isn't to just sit around and do nothing. But there's a difference between doing the work that you know in your gut that you are here to do, which only you can decide. You know, no one is going to tell you what that is. You know what it is. It's in there. It's somewhere in there, and you know it. Um, it isn't always going to be what's easy. It isn't always going to be fun, but it's going to feel right, and you're, you're going to know that you're doing the right thing when you're doing it. And, you know, there might even be multiple things throughout your life, so don't feel like you have to stay in the same place. We're supposed to be changing all the time. But um, that's not how we're raised to think. We're raised to think you need to pick the job that'll make you the most money and just stick with it, keep going, find someone, get married, stick with that person forever. It, all of this is toxic. It denies the reality that everything is constantly changing, that people sometimes evolve and evolve past each other, you know? Sometimes, like, you know, you, you, you move up to a new level and not everyone can come with you. And you just have to realize that as you start evolving, you start to look at the people that you could once relate to and you can no longer relate to them. You can no longer connect to them. And it's just not realistic to expect someone to stay in those friend circles when it's, it, at that point, it almost feels like it, it's no longer mutual. You're not getting anything out of it. They would just be kind of there taking up space and time and energy that you could be spending on people who know what to do with that and who can, who can give you what you need at that point in your life, and you can give each other that. It should always be mutually beneficial. If you start to notice your friendships seem one-sided, just drop it, you know? Clearly, they don't care. Otherwise, they'd be working to, to put in the effort and match your energy. But, you know, it doesn't, doesn't mean that they're a bad person. It just means that, you know, they're not, they're not what you need. So just cut them off. Um, 
and I'm going to get hate for saying cut your friends off, but like seriously, I'm, I'm saying like if something is toxic and draining to you, if you no longer feel like you're getting anything out of it, why would you continue to put your energy into that? Um, you can say hi once in a while, you know, unless it's really toxic, but like don't just keep engaging with that person if they're not, if they're not really putting anything back in the pot. Um, so yeah, that, that's how you protect children. You have to educate them and teach them all of this and you know, in, in doing so, you will also be protecting them from predatory adults, like priests, or as you would have them believe, um, trans people and drag queens and just generally LGBT people, um, because apparently they're the real threat to children. <laughs> um, they're all perverts, right? And they're all just trying to push an agenda down their throats. I, I think that's what you're doing. You are desperately trying to control everyone and everything around you and you have not learned how to stay in your lane and have respectful boundaries both for yourself and from other people um you just violate other people's boundaries you don't set boundaries of your own you just kind of walk around in a panicked state not really sure what you're doing or where you're going but you know you're angry about something <laughs> and you got to find a way to validate it and this, this was normal, but it's we're starting to evolve past it, and people who are choosing to think and operate that way, it's starting to become a lot more obvious that it's it's insane. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think we can do better than what we're doing. And I'm really tired of hearing people use protecting children as an excuse to be an asshole. It's, it's been done to dead. It's been done for years by all sorts of different people, and... Um, I'm going to throw in one last little quick topic here before I end the video, uh, and I'm going to have to do a separate video on this. Um, th this is even what they do with abortion, and I think the real reason that they want that is because, you know, more people means more workers. So when you take religion and belief out of the equation, there really is no logical reason to be pro-life. Um, you know, you could say, well, murder is wrong. Yeah, murder of another person is wrong. But that's only because it's wrong to invade someone else's personal space and take away their free will. And when you are completely dependent on another person, like let's say even financially, let's say that you know you have someone else that is taking care of you in every possible way and you'd be absolutely screwed without them. It is up to that person what happens to you because it's their money, it's their it's their house or whatever your living situation is. You're taking things from them. So it's up to them if they want to give that to you. It's the same thing with a mother. She's got a baby growing in the womb. It depends on her for nutrients, for everything. So clearly, it should be her decision. She sh She's the one who has to go through all the work of growing it inside of her, eating extra, and then once you push it out or you have it cut out, irreversible changes to your body. There's no one doing that, even if you give it up for adoption. And then you have to wonder for the rest of your life where it is and how it's doing. And why would you choose that if you don't want it? You know, you would choose it because you were guilted into it or because you were legally forced to. And I cannot imagine feeling justified in forcing someone to go through irreversible changes in their body just because I'm so desperate to have a baby be born when I would not force someone to have sex and conceive a baby. I don't really see the logical difference between having an abortion and just not getting pregnant in the first place. The result is the same. No baby gets born. So what is the difference? The only difference is if you get way further up a woman's uterus than you belong, or if you have religious beliefs. And either way, you know, if the woman's uterus is what you have to pass through in order to have an opinion about this, it should still be up to her. She's the gatekeeper. She's the one who has to go through all the shit. So why is it up to you? You know, you could say, but it's about the life inside of her, protecting her. Here we go, protecting children. That's always what it comes down to. But what are you really doing? You're hurting someone else, someone who has already been born and grew up and had a life. And you're saying, yeah, but what if it was her fault? What if she was careless and didn't use protection or whatever? So what does that mean? That you should force her to give birth? Think about what you're saying. It's dogma. You have been brainwashed to think this way. And there really is no logical reason to care. It's someone else's body, someone else's situation. How can you be so obsessed with having empathy for a fetus? Do you actually have empathy for children? Because there are plenty of children out there who have already been born and are homeless and need someone to adopt them. 
Maybe if you're so obsessed with saving children, you could actually go out and put some of your energy towards something that will actually protect children. But instead, you're you're doing that. And, you know, you're whether it's pushing against drag queens or trans people or whatever it is, it's attacking minorities. And this is beneficial because minorities are, you know, the underdog, you know, and they're becoming empowered. Their mere existence suggests empowerment because in order to exist, they have to know what it's like to kind of fight the man, you know, to, to, to stand up and do their own thing instead of what they're being told to do. So in order to keep those people in check, they created a new villain for them to attack. Um, so the, the real villain is not being attacked because then they're busy attacking, the, the, the left is attacking the right instead of the left and right joining forces to attack the people that are just taking advantage of the working class. So that's what's really going on. Um, this video was a lot longer than I wanted it to be, but I'm, I'm happy with it, so I don't care. Um, and even though I, I could probably say a lot more on some of the topics that I brought up, I, I covered what I wanted to about protecting children. So that was my rant. Thank you for watching and listening. I don't have an outro either, so hopefully, um, hopefully I don't say something stupid. Um, although I guess I already did. So it's a little too late now, but yeah, if you have anything you want to add or just share your thoughts in the comments, I, I always appreciate feedback. Um, like I said, I'm not going to be engaging in discussions, but I do live streams all the time. So you, if you want to subscribe to my channel, yeah. excuse me, I burp all the time too. Um, you can, uh, you can check out a live stream and we can have a discussion there that that'll be fun that'll be interesting i know i said some controversial things i know not everyone is going to agree with me um and that's okay you know one thing i learned is that people do not change their minds you know when they click on a video they kind of already know what their opinion is going to be they're very very few people are open to changing their minds and those people are usually respectful in in the comment section instead of angry telling you that you're wrong or pointing out your flaws and trying to you know just attack you effectively they're attacking you um but you know you could for example you could say what did you mean when you said this or why i don't know why do you think this but instead you're saying you're wrong for saying this you shouldn't have said that here's why i'm right and you're wrong this mentality is not productive it's it's just not worth indulging so you know i've seen quite a bit of that on some of my last few videos so i just learned not to respond to people but um i still appreciate hearing feedback and uh yeah thank you for watching i hope you have a great night or morning or whatever time of day it is for you